what was the other thing? Ross Duthat's op-ed on what wokeness means. I miss that. Um, that's okay. He wrote a nice little piece, actually. Bethany Mandel, I guess, was on the Brianna Joyce Taylor's mm-hmm. podcast, and she asked her to define wokeness, and she kind of like couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And then do that wrote a thing. Mm-hmm. He, I'm curious yeah. if anybody can provide a good he definition of wokeness. He gave a very good definition, sort of. Uh, my my feeling about wokeness is that it's like porn. You know it when you see it. And so no definition is really necessary. The, he describes it very well, but it does take him a while. Mm-hmm. And he sort of adopts the voice of like... Well, he's got to keep lib, the audience A lib yeah. And describes like what their ideological worldview Mm -hmm. is like which basically aligned with my understanding of wokeness which is that it's like a trickle down of like academic Mm -hmm. understanding and jargon around like oppression being systematic axes of power and like intersectionality Mm -hmm. and that that's like the dominant framework through which you dasha define wokeness now (laughs) do it now (laughs) that it's like a ideological disposition that's grounded in or rooted in academia. Yeah. Th- that then trickles down into that justifies in a mainstream power centers, yeah, like through. politics and the corporate and whatever. Yeah. We got to put our last remaining brain cells together and define wokeness <laughs> on the look. My definition of wokeness is literally when the idea that you're the target, not merely the collateral becomes a matter of official policy Mm -hmm. it's when it's fake and gay (laughs) yeah you can just tell yeah it's like um when the civil rights act becomes the constitution yeah (laughs) that's good yeah (laughs) so okay i met this guy oh yeah who works in academia and he told me this harrowing tale of how they were interviewing two candidates for a tenure track position. One was a highly esteemed, highly qualified white guy. And the other one was a much more mediocre, less credentialed black guy. And the committee voted and, of course, went with the black guy and then offered to pay him $100,000 extra what they were paying the white guy. Wow. Which seems like a fake and gay story that the <laughs> conservatard media passes around yeah. as like rage bait. It seems extreme, yeah. This guy is not at all like ideologically possessed. Even he, you know, he's an, an, a nice dude with like basically liberal sensibilities and even he was like aghast by it. Yeah. Which like, that's wokeness. That's That's wokeness. And by Wokeness the way, this is the opposite of Donald Trump's platform. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you want Marxism in the government mm-hmm. and the nut jobs to castrate your kids or whatever. But Ross Duhat knows what he's doing, which is like speaking in a voice that fills to his core liberal audience while a uh, dog whistling and radicalizing. He- so respect to him. <clears throat> this is him talking in like the woke voice you can't have real freedom of speech unless you first silence some oppressors and all of this is necessarily a cultural and psychological project which is why schools media pop culture and language itself are the essential battlegrounds yes economic policy matters but material arrangements are downstream of culture and psychology if you want to save the planet or end the rule of greed you need a different kind of human being not just a system that assumes racist patriarchal values and tries to put them on a leash blah 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 and look at what we've learned that once homophobia diminishes millions upon millions of young people begin to define themselves as what they truly are as some form of lgbtq plus slipping the shackles of heteronormativity at last which is why the backlash against the spread of transgender identification among kids must be defeated because this is the beachhead the proving ground for full emancipation he concludes, if you find a lot of this narrative persuasive, even filtered through my conservative mind, then whatever woke describes, it probably describes you. If you recoil from it, welcome to the ranks of the unwoke. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. This is also a good example of like the woke is more correct than the mainstream. Well, how so? Woke people will tell you exactly what they mean 
they're very upfront that they want to see a world where things are gendered and racialized. Yeah. They, I saw some clip of like people were passing around of Robin D'Angelo talking about how um, people of color should distance themselves from white people. Okay. They actually, it's like a horseshoe theory. They, in a weird what? way, believe. <laughs> well, they believe the same like thing. Segregation. That, that um, Baba Bowie. The hard right believes that the races should be segregated. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of um, porn, there was like this recent discourse that was kicked off by Brianna Joy Gray interviewing Bethany Mandel, oh, where yeah. she said, define, define woke. woke. And I was thinking like, well, how about racism? Define racism. Right? We can't like, agree on a definition. Yeah, like that. because it's uh, racism is also like porn. You know it when you see it but it evades a clear-cut, concise definition. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten into a very theoretical realm where Mm. most people, even if there is a point to the structural arguments, most people don't live their lives on a structural level and can't really be convinced like that, especially if you're talking about people whose lives don't (coughs) feel to them very privileged. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But even like on the level of culture, when you get into... Well, that's what people really talk about when they talk about wokeness, is they talk about like... the. Can you define wokeness, Dasha? (gasps) We We tried last time. I did this last time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm one behind because I was traveling. This is Um, my favorite podcast. I try to be encyclopedic with my knowledge of what y'all have discussed. I like Ross Duthat, little op-ed he he wrote about it. I thought that was... Very good. Very well done. And uh, but yeah, he described like the the trickle down of structural understandings of of oppression through the academy and posts of culture, mm-hmm. basically, which yeah, is yeah, where yeah, wokeness yeah. is really like, really yeah. rearing its ugly head is in schools, media, to the point where they're like attacking the tried and true beloved medium of racist humor, which in my mind actually goes a long way to diffuse racial tensions, because like roasting is the highest form of flattery it means that somebody has gone through the trouble of like observing and understanding Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. and more importantly trusting that you will not take it personally and who said comedy is the highest form of intelligence was that harold bloom being able to take a joke means that you're comfortable enough in your skin in this society to not be always like a exposed nerve ending ready to take offense People everybody can't is even like perceive ex- yeah. a joke yeah let alone right take right. one with grace my hot take is we should bring jerry springer back because <laughs> i think that when we had like racialized talk show bra i forgot that was a real part of my childhood in the 90s that was yeah, really yeah, that yeah. people b- were blowing off a lot of steam exactly. i feel like jerry springer used to take the place of these snuff porn videos yeah, and it was a lot more congenial that was a release yeah. valve you could yeah. just get it all out and on I, jerry springer we had a, we had a security guard Done. I was sounding off uh, on Twitter about this the other night because I distinctly remember being like a teen and watching a segment on one of the main like daytime talk shows like Sally Jesse or Maury or something about internecine gang warfare in the LA public school system between Armenians and Mexicans. Armenians and Mexicans? Yeah, because it's the narcissism of small differences. They're actually the very similar are culture. Yeah, yeah they're, <laughs> Armenians really are. Yeah. <laughs> No, they're really they were really feuding. Steve Saylor actually has this distinction between I A N and Y A N Armenians. Like the old diaspora that came during I've heard the you genocide this, yeah. and and the the new diaspora that mainly came from the collapse of the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. I'm like a Y A N Armenian. And it's a very You're an upper Armenian. I'm a lower no. Armenian. Oh, you're a lower Armenian. Yeah, because I came after the the fall of the Soviet Union. Even in like the Armenian ca- um, community, the IANs frown upon the YANs because oh. they're like the new poorer ones who have like a much higher rate of criminality. I think the, the okay. YAN mafia perpetuated the largest Medicare fraud in the United oh, States. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm aware of that. Yeah, yeah. I under, remember under COVID, the, right? Yeah, I remember the um, the ringleader because his name was Hrog Terjanian, <laughs> which is like the ugliest name ever. <laughs> Hrog. 